this act, this crime against humanity, strongly substantiated by the historical evidence and eyewitness accounts of Armenian and non-Armenian, including Turkish sources, was unequivocally a genocide. The Turkish authorities may deny that it was a genocide. It was a crime against humanity. Some nations or governments may still keep silent about it for so-called geopolitical reasons. But denial is a dead end. Negationism will eventually fall short before the truth. The retroactive application of the Convention is a critical issue, which will be certainly treated by the Conference. Since only a state that has accepted the jurisdiction of the International Court of Justice may submit a case to it. I hope that the Republic of Armenia will soon study this matter and take the necessary action. Are there some other possibilities for legal action, such as taking the Armenian genocide to a national tribunal or creating a special tribunal or taking it to the European Human Rights Court? These questions need to be addressed by the conference from a juridical perspective. In stressing the crucial importance of the promotion, protection, and restoration of justice, the Commission on Human Rights affirms the right of crime victims to access to justice and spells out various aspects and procedures of reparation for the victims of violation of international human rights and humanitarian law. Regarding the process of reparation, the following issues require scrutiny. A. The Commission provides a broader definition of victim, stating that, I quote, a victim may also be a dependent or a member of the immediate family or household of the direct victim, unquote. B, the victim's effective access to justice includes, quote, all available judicial, administrative, or other public processes under existing domestic laws as well as under international law. Within the context of the restoration of justice, adequate provisions should also be made to allow groups of victims to present collective claims for reparation and to receive reparation collectively. And reparation, I continue the quote, and the reparation should be proportional to the gravity of the violations and the harm suffered, unquote. C. The state of government under whose authority the genocide occurred is obliged to provide reparation. However, if the state or government responsible for the genocide is no longer in existence, quote, the state of government's successor in title should provide reparation to the victims, unquote. D. The Commission on Human Rights refers 
to three forms of reparation. Restitution, compensation, and rehabilitation. These concepts or forms of reparation may have different connotations and implications in different sociopolitical contexts and in relation to specific cases. How do they apply to the Armenian genocide? For decades, we have focused on the recognition of the genocide by Turkey and the international community. In fact, the recent court cases against American, Turkish, and French insurance and private companies, the decision of U.S. Congress to urge Turkey to return churches and church-related properties to their owners, and the Turkish government's decision on 27th of August 2011 to return to the minorities the properties confiscated since 1936 came to re-emphasize the crucial importance of reparation. Indeed, recognition of truth implies reparation. These acts are closely interconnected. This is indeed at the heart of international law. On the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, should we accept a symbolic formal apology and recognition by Turkey of the genocide? Should we claim financial compensation for the victims of genocide and for the properties? Should we claim the return of church, community, and personal properties? Further, should we demand that the reparation includes the damages that the Armenian people were subjected to during the white genocide, namely the constant threat to the Armenian identity in a diaspora situation that was caused by the Red Genocide? Should we finally consider land reparation within the provisions of international law? The formal recognition of the Armenian Genocide is a conditio sine qua non for any attempt or process aimed at the restoration of justice. And as a first concrete step in the direction of reparation, Turkey must return the church and community properties confiscated by the Ottoman Turkish authorities to its legal owners, the Armenian Catholicosate of Cilicia. As Catholicosate of Cilicia, which was established in the 10th century, I repeat, in the 10th century in Cilicia, southwestern part of present Turkey, and which was in 1915 forcefully uprooted from its historical seat, we, as Catholicosate of Cilicia, claim the ownership of our properties confiscated by the Turkish authorities. It is with this objective in mind that we have set the agenda of this conference. Once again, I warmly welcome you and I wish you an enjoyable stay in Antilias with us in a successful conference. God bless you all.